After the Cowboys lost to the Dolphins in Miami on Christmas Eve, Coach Mike McCarthy declared that the team will just be war- road warriors if they have to be in the postseason. The problem is they just lost on the road. They have not proven that they can be road warriors. This is the ultimate we-need-to-be-at-home team. Here's McCarthy on getting his Cowboys to the point where they need to be as the postseason approaches. I mean, I like to think that we, we've been – focused that way all year I mean we you know we've been talking about getting to 11 wins we're still we're still not there and that's why I think just the the 11th win and um, obviously we understand what our opponents fighting for this week you know and I I think it creates a lot of you know a lot of juice for this game coach Jimmy Johnson's going into the ring of honor so I mean this is this is going to be a great contest that we 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 look forward to and um, and it's just like any, you got to take care of what's in front of you. We can't control what goes on in Philadelphia or these other places, as we know. So uh, we just want to be better than, you know, we want to be much better than we were last week. Uh, that's the reality of this. But, there, you know, there's a lot of good things that, you know, occurred in Miami. You know, I, I thought the way we flew around and, you know, improved on some of the things from the prior week. So uh, still an opportunity to grow, get better. Um, you know, we're complimentary football pieces are intact. And, uh, you know, and I think we're, we're heading in the right direction, big picture wise, but this is a great challenge that we have in front of us. You know, I may be wrong here, but when I listen to him and watch him, he seems like a guy who knows no matter what they do, they're going to be the five seed. That these last two games don't don't mean anything. They're going to be the five seed. Yeah, I think he's expecting Period. that. Right. That's number why he makes the road number of wins comment. doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Number number of wins does not matter. What matters is what spot do you land in on the playoff tree? They still have a chance to win the division, but they need the Eagles to lose to the Cardinals or the Giants. And I guess they could, but he's accepting what seems to be the reality here. They they these last two regular season games don't mean that much for Dallas because the chances if we're going to focus on analytics and percentages, the chances of them ultimately winning the division and getting that home game, a couple of home games in the playoffs, if they're the two seed, it's, it's, it's not realistic. But I still think his team's going to be ready to go. Primetime game, Saturday night, Lions coming to town. They're going to go out and they're going to play hard. But I think there is an acceptance and an understanding by the organization at this point, it's going to be hard to win the division. Yeah. That, I, that was the thing they really wanted, and it's going to be hard for them to do it. They, they, they either way have to get the mo- mojo going in a positive way here. They don't want to go into the playoffs and go, well, we lost the three playoff teams here, but now we're in the playoffs and we'll, we'll beat the three playoff teams, right? Uh, that, that's hard for the psyche of a football player. So they better play hard. And, you know, to, to your point, like you're more than likely, we know the Eagles have went out, but the Eagles are – you know, they, they're kind of like in that do dumb crap mode a little bit and, and have to get that sickness out of their, their blood a little bit as we talk about with teams every now and then. I mean, again, the other day, I mean, they're, they're going to blow out the Giants and they run into each other like you talked about, the Keystone Cops, the pick six. You know, they've kind of let a lot of teams hang around uh, that shouldn't have hung around all year. Two close games to the Commanders. I mean, lost to the Jets. So that's where, if you're Dallas, you want to keep playing too. But, you know, Dallas is a football team. There's some good things, as we know. Uh, get back to what I always talk about, and you kind of used this word yesterday a little bit. It, it, it's, it's work for their offense, though, when they have to play good defenses. That, that's the thing I look at. Right, and that's to me is what's scary about them. You know, of course, it's unfortunate they had the fumbled, the you know fumbled the first drive of the game, giving it to a fullback who never carries the ball. But here we are in a big game in a big moment. Let's give the guy the ball that never gets the ball in one of the biggest moments of the year. I hate that call more than any in football. You know that. That's not revisionist history. There, I hate that call. Well, don't give the ball to the guy that never gets the ball in the biggest moment of the game or not, you know, down by the goal line in a big moment of the game and do that. I hate that. But either way, there's just, you know, the the passing offense, as you've heard me say, is pretty simple, right? It's just relying on plays, and they struggled the other day to be consistent as far as moving the ball down the field. They can't just run on people at will. So that is not conducive necessarily to playoff football. And defensively, we, we see, too, that, you know, again, 
the people can run the ball on them. The Dolphins are not exactly like a smash mouth football team. When they wanted to run the ball on Dallas the other day, they did it enough to where it kept Dallas honest and they could still throw the ball and move the ball that way. And yeah, you know, Dallas is good, but just, you know, I, I look at Dallas and of course I don't see Super Bowl in their future by any stretch of the imagination. They're favored by six on Saturday night at home against the Lions. They match up what, good with the what Lions. Do you think the sp- what do you think the spread would be if this game were at Ford Field? Oh, I would think Dallas the Lions two, Ma- two eh, and a half. Yeah, maybe even closer just because of that element altogether. But but there are some things that match up. Now, what do you worry about is because Detroit just smash mouth and run the ball down their throat, right? But. You know, Detroit does not have speed guys at receiver. They should be able to play man-to-man against this group. And then Detroit's defense, as we know, it's not good. It's not. And that's where Dallas could certainly get in the shootout with the Detroit Lions and and win this football game. And that's why, you know, the NFL is awesome. Like you said, you know, it's it's a matchup league. And just because you're, you know, better in a team totality, the difference in talents is just it's so close in this league that one mistake, wrong matchup, whatever, and you're in a dogfight. The key to defending the Lions, get them to third down, easier said than done, because they've got the weapons to continue drives without ever facing third and long. Yeah, they're awesome. They, they, between right. Jameer Gibbs and Run David the ball, Montgomery. Run the ball, screen the ball, play action passes. Boom, boom, right, boom. exactly. It's it's too much on those first and second downs. Like you said, the defense is like, they can attack us every way. Third down, you get them there and you go, okay, they're in the shotgun and we know they're going to throw the ball. So there's not too many tricks they can go with here. And you're right, that is certainly one of the keys. And then we know Jared Goff, pocket collapsing, people around him, not necessarily his best either. Definitely a key to to success. You're spot on there if you want to beat the Lions. And a little history in that game too before we take a break. The Lions' last playoff win, 1991 season, over the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, maybe they'll cross paths again in the postseason. They got screwed there. The last playoff game, they went there and beat. Remember, they had the pass interference call that got called, then they picked it up. And then the next week, Dallas went to Green Bay and got screwed over by the Des Bryant play. And then Green Bay went to Seattle and should have blown them out to go to the Super Bowl and let them come back and win the game. And then there was the Brady and Malcolm Butler and all that. It was an amazing playoff run that year. Back when the NFL actually embraced transparency as its officiating function, yeah. Dean Blandino, the day after that game, was on PFT Live explaining what happened. There was a play where it was both interference and holding. Exactly. And it wasn't called. Right, right. And 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 they actually had kids. Kids, I'm going to tell you a story about days gone by. The NFL at one point actually had somebody employed by it that they would put on shows like this to explain in a very transparent and open and persuasive way why things were called a certain way and would actually acknowledge mistakes. Imagine that. Imagine that. There was a world like that once upon a time for the NFL. That world is no longer uh, part of our our reality as we cover the NFL. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.